the afternoon is all yours. It's all theirs, actually. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move quickly. My name is Duncan, as introduced. Uh, BDA is an advisory firm uh, advising private equity firms. Oh, we found the other mic. Okay, very good. Uh, and uh, hedge funds and others on um, investments in tech and other sectors. Um, a slight change in the program. We're going to kick off with um, Hans Tung from uh, Teaming. Uh, because he has to run to an LP meeting, an RMB LP fund meeting, so that's very appropriate. So uh, please, everybody, welcome Hans on stage, and then Rebecca will join us after. So, thank you. You apparently have a mic there. So. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks, Duncan. So, th normally these things are called fireside chats. Um, it's pretty hot, so we can all imagine the fire. <laughs> so, um, but basically, I think we just want to have a little conversation about uh, the world as you see it. Uh, firstly, you've just closed a, uh, a US dollar fund, and I understand uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that, and we can share with the, uh, the audience on the fundraising environment. Sure. Um, Chi Ming has, uh, two, had two funds under management. Fund one was uh, started in 2006, mm -hmm. 200 million. Uh, fund two was uh, about 310 million, that was uh, in 2008, okay. and which is closed uh, fund three, which was uh, 450 million dollar US. Uh, so, that brings a total close to a billion under management. Um, and we added a few uh, LPs, uh, new LPs this time, uh, including uh, Hover and Dallin, uh, and previously Princeton was our largest LP. That's right, okay. Yeah. So in that process, you've got to learn a lot about what the LPs obviously are thinking and interested in. What, what shifts are you seeing, one in terms of attitude towards China or to the sector uh, that you think are relevant? Um, good question. <laughs> Overall, um, the LPs are really interested in China they're a little bit scared about evaluation um, and the, um, the hype, the worry if there's a bubble, uh, the worry should they continue to do it knowing that it could be a bubble. Um, but overall looking at the uh, potential returns available around the world, China still stand out as the, uh, the top market. Right. So the ones that have been here longer, the LPs have been here longer, are more ready to pony up. And the one that have been shying away are trying to figure out whether the, whether the right one or two or three partner they should do it with to get a taste of China's China return. And I understand, the last time we, we met, we were at Stanford where uh, uh, we had a conference on, on e-commerce in, in, in March, and then you described that you would be moving to Beijing, and that is happening. So it's, obviously the LPs are keen that you uh, are based here as well. Was that part of the deal? Or? <laughs> no, it wasn't part of the deal, but they were happy that we yeah. have a senior person coming over to Beijing, because they are more internet um, startups listed in the US from Beijing than anywhere else in China. Right. And so previously, so you're expanding the team team here as part of this? Uh, yeah, we have office here. We have uh, six investment professionals already. I'll okay. be the seventh one. Um, we, our headquarters is still in Shanghai, uh, right. but we uh, are increasing our coverage in Beijing and northern China. And in Shanghai, so to that geography question, what are you seeing more uh, in terms of Shanghai versus Beijing then? And what, what keeps you busy in Shanghai in terms of the types of companies that you're looking at? Um, Shanghai, there's, uh, there's still stuff online, gaming, uh, yeah. social networking, right. uh, services, websites. Uh, companies, as well as a lot of, lot, lot of mobile, um, also a lot of consumer services. As you know, in, uh, in yeah. around the Shanghai region, consumer uh, service level is probably the highest anywhere in China. Right. So that breeds uh, a lot of good entrepreneurs who understand how to service the customers better. Mm -hmm. And what are your personal feelings, feelings about actually moving back into this environment and, and how things have changed? Or, I mean, you've been traveling here a lot, obviously, as it is, but what are, what are the biggest changes you, you expect to experience living here versus in, in the valley? Um, Apart from traffic. But, no. oh. <laughs> um, yeah, you and I, we go back and forth a lot. Um, the, the pace here in China, especially Beijing, is a lot faster than in, in the valley. Yep. Um, uh, as soon as people here realize, for example, Groupon or Facebook, MySpace happening or, 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 or online video, you will see 1,000, 2,000 companies doing exactly the same things, all trying to compete with each other. So the velocity of change, the velocity of innovation, the velocity of localization is a lot faster here than in, in, in the U.S. And the quality of entrepreneurs also have improved a lot over the last three years. When we made um, our in investment back in 2006, 2007, most of the uh, entrepreneurs we back are first-time entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, now, I, um, I was just counting, of the last 10 deals that uh, we have done in the internet slash consumer space, three came, uh, founders, three came from uh, Baidu, uh, okay. one came from Taobao, uh, one from uh, Yahoo Taiwan, uh, one from Yahoo China, and uh, uh, two from uh, Google. Right. So the quality of entrepreneurs have, uh, have improved a lot. And also their experience with venture investments, their experience with VCs, the experience with uh, uh, previously successful startup uh, that have since gone public obviously have been a huge difference. 
So I guess it cuts both ways, isn't it? Because on the one hand, previously there just weren't that many people who had perhaps the requisite skills to convince investors to get on with it. And now there are more, but that, that also means more competition. But I mean, I guess it's a, it's a flight to quality then in terms of the entrepreneurs that you're seeing. Uh, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I think for the top VCs in China, there's no shortage of deals to do. It really, and people have to be choosy and yeah. pick the, the, the best entrepreneurs that, that we should be backing. Valuation also have increased quite a bit, yes. <laughs> unfortunately. So um, whereas a couple of years ago, when we made a number of our investments that are in a pipeline for potential IPOs, um, price have, have at least doubled, if not tripled, versus what we saw two years ago uh, during the downturn. Um, and now, so now we're doing two things. One, we're going earlier, right. and we've done a number of green fields in the last uh, two years, mm -hmm. and also we're more selective on the uh, the uh, Series Bs and Series Cs, and making sure that we are convinced that they're going to stay as a market category leader, mm -hmm. uh, and not just a flash in the pan. Right. And then we're seeing the uh, are we seeing a sort of a super angel phenomenon emerging here, or are you? Uh, I mean, that's obviously. Talked about a lot in the valley, but uh, right. good question. Uh, a lot of people ask me about what is the state of the ecosystem here. Um, and the super angel plays a huge role in the U.S. Obviously, um, in a number of um, uh, great angel funds like First Run Capital or um, uh, you, you put Union Square in, 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 in that category uh, or Ron Conway are, f are friends of the firm. Um, and in China, of the uh, 22 internet slash consumer uh, investments we have done. More than half are done with super angels uh, in China, and you, those 22 came out of about four or five super angels. Um, and if we look at the performance of the uh, the deals that with with super angels involved, have tend to be uh, um, higher uh, for the most part. Right. And at the other end of the spectrum, are you seeing, as we're seeing the U.S. with you know Andreessen and others, it's a very, very late stage uh, pre-IPO investments, and everybody's jumping on social. Are you going to see the similar uh, phenomenon here? Do you think as we go forward? Or yeah, that's another interesting question. Back in 2008, we were looking at investments in Vanco or right. in um, uh, Kaixin, arguably their Web 2.0 companies. And back then, the valley, the the conventional wisdom in the valley was that there's no Web 2.0. All the web 1.0 company have adopted web 2.0, and, and they, they, they are they're the winner in the web 2.0 era. Um, and now, it's fast forward two years from then, uh, it's a very different yes. feeling these days. Yeah. Um, and so, whereas we see a number of U.S. funds that used to do early stage have gone late stage into deals so. in Solomo, here um, the early stage funds are still more disciplined. I don't see any early stage companies doing late stage deals, but People do do more expansion stage deals than before. Okay. So you saw Series B and Series C. There are a lot more of those, and evaluation for those have gone up. Right. Um, the Series C, Series D ones, the pre-IPO ones, are still being done by the uh, the PE or um, companies that uh, or hedge funds moving into that space. Right, because obviously there's been the big tension in the valley is that the investment bankers are suddenly getting very frustrated that <laughs> people don't need the public capital markets uh, as, as soon as they used to. And, right. Uh, but we haven't quite seen that yet. And you've had a recent uh, exit. Uh, maybe we can share a little bit. Then. Yeah. Um, uh, we had two IPOs last year and, and this year. The first one is uh, Jia Yun, which is the combination of Match.com and eHarmony of China for lack of uh, being, being, being um, uh, simplify the, 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 what they do a little bit. Um, but the fundamentals of China versus uh, U.S. in this business are very different. Yes, right. I remember at Sanford we were talking about that on the, particularly on the car rental and other markets, that the big mistake is to just come and exactly. the X of China. And, exactly. Right. Okay. And over here, the, uh, in, in the U.S. from the 1980s and 2000s, that's when most of the gigantic VC returns were, 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 were realized, especially uh, the second part of that, that, that era. And that's really driven by the um, uh, post-war to baby boomers, right. then reaching age 30, 25 to 35, 40, 40. Mm -hmm. That's the age that, that really get them to um, spend a lot more for their family. Without, without that, there wouldn't be no PC revolution, there wouldn't be internet revolution, there wouldn't be telecom revolution. In China, the baby boomers of, of China is people born after the Cultural Revolution, mm -hmm. 1980s and, and 1990s. And they're reaching the uh, prime year of, the, of their life, doing a lot more spending over the next uh, 10 years. Right. So we, we're definitely seeing more solid growth here than, than in, in the U.S. because of demographics. Right. But from a model standpoint, um, you know, very, very, very different. Um, for Jia Yuan, uh, ticker symbol is D-A-T-E, um, <laughs> they're really playing on demographics as well. It's uh, for every 
because one, uh, every woman there are 1.17 uh, men chasing after her. So the, uh, the, the, uh, there's definitely a mismatch. And then, um, That's online games. It's done very well. Was, uh, that's right. Now. <laughs> and then with, with the urbanization trend in China, people have less and less time now. So mm. that kind of website makes sense. Whereas right. in the U.S., it's, it's for a different social purpose. Right, right. And so uh, in terms of the, the new fund, and uh, this is still U.S. dollar, but you're also looking at the R&B side. I mean, you, uh, is that... Uh, do you think you need to do more on the R&B side, or is it still a, enough opportunities for you on the U.S.? Um, there's definitely enough opportunity for the U.S. dollar fund, um, but with China, there's definitely a, a, a stronger uh, favoritism by the government looking at encouraging right. more uh, better companies listing domestically. Mm -hmm. And that domestic market is giving great PEs to investors yeah. and entrepreneurs, obviously. Um, the IPO PEs are somewhere between 30x to 40x. Um, and then um, within the first day of trading, it could be 80x, 90x. Um, so those are phenomenal P's for a reasonably good but not superstar companies. How long could it last? Well, we, we definitely will see correction. But we, for us, as from a management standpoint, we probably will have um, some asset under RMB. The ratio won't be one-to-one -one initially. It will be more in favor of USD. So, okay. uh, but we definitely want to see more IPOs out of the RMB fund to uh, get better at it. Excellent. Well, I know actually you have a meeting on the R&B fund, so we're going to let you beat the traffic, I think so. I would like to thank, thank Rebecca you. for uh, switching places, but I'd like to thank you very much for, for your time. And uh, for, we have no time for questions, but I guess people are tweeting, so uh, you can check on Weibo and see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.